Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be covering lesson 5.1 on bisectors in triangles. The essential question that we'll answer is how do you solve problems involving perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors? Let's get started with two theorems. Our first theorem here is called the perpendicular bisector theorem. And this theorem states that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. That means that if this line right here is a perpendicular bisector, as you can see, it's marked in the picture. Notice it's perpendicular because it's making the 90 degrees. And it's a bisector because it's taking the segment and it's dividing it into two equal parts as marked by these marks right there. Well, this theorem tells us that if a point is anywhere along that perpendicular bisector, that point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So go ahead and put a point P here on your picture. And let's call the endpoint A and B. Well, what this theorem is telling us is the distance from P to A is going to be congruent to the distance from P to B because that point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. The length of A to P is equal to the length of B to P. This theorem can actually be proven using congruent triangles. If you look at my picture right here, before I marked those two sides congruent, we already have one pair of congruent sides marked here because it's the bisector, and we have one pair of congruent angles because it's perpendicular. Well, that point along the third side basically just makes another side. And now if you look at my original two markings, I have a side, an angle, and a side. These triangles are congruent by SAS, and that makes the length of AP equal to the length of BP because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So it all goes back to the triangle proofs we did last chapter. The converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem is just the opposite of that. This says that if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So in the diagram here, because I have my point equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, we would be able to conclude that this segment right here is a perpendicular bisector, which means we know that these two halves are the same. That's the bisector part. And we also know that these two angles are both 90. That's the perpendicular part. So basically to summarize these two theorems, if we know a point is on the perpendicular bisector, we know that point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. And if we know that we have a point that's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, then we know that point must be along the perpendicular bisector. So let's try an example where we apply the perpendicular bisector theorem. What is the value of AD? First, observe here in the picture that AC is the perpendicular bisector of BC. Please mark that in your notes. Now, how I know it's the perpendicular bisector is because it's perpendicular as marked by this 90 here, and it's a bisector because these two sides, BC and DC, are both 11. So it's cutting segment BD into two equal halves. Well, now we know A is along that perpendicular bisector. So by the perpendicular bisector theorem, AB has to be equal to AD, again, because that's by the perpendicular bisector theorem. Since the point is along the perpendicular bisector, we know that that point must be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Well, now we can just substitute our numbers in here. AB is 6x minus 10, so 6x minus 10 has to be equal to AD, which is 3x plus 2. And now it's just an algebra equation. I'm going to draw my line here through the middle, and let's start by collecting all the x's on one side. We can subtract 3x from both sides. That gets us down to 3x minus 10 equals 2. And now if we add 10 to each side, 
we get 3x equals 12. Then if we divide both sides by 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So my answer for x is 4. But remember, the question is asking us for AD. So now that we have x, we can go back to our picture and see that AD is just 3x plus 2. Then just substitute in the x value we found. That means it's 3 times 4 plus 2. And that would be 12 plus 2. And that would be 14. So my final answer here is AD equal 14. Now we also know that AB would also be 14 because they should be equal to one another. So if you want to double check to make sure that your answer makes sense, I could plug in a 4 in here. 6 times 4 would be 24. And 24 minus 10 would indeed make 14. So both AD and AB are 14. These trinals are a little bit different than the example we just looked at. So if you'd like to go over it together, you can keep the video going. If you'd like to try it on your own first and then check your answers, please pause your video now. Okay, so the first thing to notice here is that point Z is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. See how ZX and ZY are congruent to one another? Well, that means by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem that WZ is the perpendicular bisector. And since WZ is the perpendicular bisector of XY, by definition, we know that the distance from X to W has to be equal to the distance from Y to W. So XW equals YW. And now if we sub in our values here, that's 5n minus 2 equals 2n plus 7. And now we can just do the algebra. I'm going to start by subtracting 2n on both sides. That gets all the n's to one side. So now we have 3n minus 2 equals 7. Then we can add 7 on each, or add 2, excuse me, on each side. And that's 3n equal 9. And now we're one step away here. If we divide by 3, we get n equal 3. Okay, now to get n equal 3, we're not quite done. We're looking for the value of wy. So see how wy is just the 2n plus 7? Well, now if we sub in our number here, that's 2 times 3 plus 7. And 2 times 3 is 6. And 6 plus 7 is 13. So my answer would be wy equals 13. Now, I always just like to double check and make sure this side over here should also be 13 because it's on the perpendicular bisector. Well, if we take 5 times 3, that's 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. So both halves here are 13. Now, if I asked you what was the length of xy, xy would just be the sum of the two put together. So xy would be 13 plus 13, which would make it 26. You might see one of those on your homework assignment where it asks you for a length of a full segment. For try now one part B, you can again try it on your own by pausing the video, or if you'd like to go through the solution with me, keep your video playing. Here we're looking for what is the length of OL. But before I can get to OL, I need to find a few other things. Start by noticing that KN is the perpendicular bisector of JL. I know it's the perpendicular bisector because JK and LK are congruent to one another. They're both 17. So I have that point K that's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. That means it's along the perpendicular bisector. So that JN should be equal to LN. Notice how JN is 14. That means LN must also be 14. So from here to here, we have 14. Then you should also notice that the 9 and the 9 are equal to each other. 
So that means that OM is the perpendicular bisector of NL. So that means these two halves have to be the same. Well, if it's 14 all the way across and we're looking for the halfway point, to find OL, we just need half of 14. So I'm going to do 14 divided by 2, and that means that OL must be 7. Okay, so that means we're 7 here, it's 7 there, and then again when I total up my 7 and my 7, I'm at 14, which is the half of the bigger one. Now let's switch to angle bisectors. The angle bisector theorem tells us that if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it's equidistant from the two sides of the angle. This again can be proven using congruent triangles. If I have an angle bisector right here and I put a point on it, when I'm talking about the distance from the sides, the distance is always the perpendicular distance. So if we drop a perpendicular down here, if this makes a 90, and then if I drop a perpendicular the other way, whoops, that's a little off. Let's try that again. Also makes a 90. Well, notice now I have two triangles that I've formed, and they both have a 90 degree angle in them for the distance to the side, and they also both have a congruent angle by the angle bisector. Those two triangles are also sharing a side. So essentially, you could prove those two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. That means that the distance from here to here, let me give this a name here. Let's call that PA and let's call this PB. They have to be the same. So P to A is equal to P to B. We can also do the converse of that. If you have a point in the interior of an angle and that point is equidistant from the two sides of the angle, then you know that point must be on the bisector of the angle. So what we could add to our picture here would be a bisector right there. So I have a ray and it's dividing it into two equal halves as I've marked in the diagram here. So angle bisector theorem says if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it's equidistant from the sides. And then the converse of that says if a point is on the interior of an angle and it's equidistant from the two sides, then it's on the bisector of the angle. So let's try some examples applying the angle bisector theorem. First, notice that LJ here, it's a ray, so I should actually call it ray JL. See how that's bisecting the angle KJM? I know it's bisecting the angle because the two halves of the angle are marked the same with that one curved line. Well, by the angle bisector theorem, we know that if a point lies on the angle bisector of an angle, it's equidistant from the sides. So we can conclude that KL must be equal to ML by the angle bisector theorem. Well, now let's just sub in our expressions. KL is 2x plus 3, and ML is 4x minus 11. So I'm setting those equal to one another. And now let's solve for x. We can start by subtracting 2x on each side. So I have 3 equals 2x minus 11. Then we can add 11 on both sides to get the 2x alone. So that's 14 equals 2x. And now just divide by 2 on each side to get 7 for your x. We're looking, though, for what is the length of KL. So to find KL, we go to our picture here, and we see that KL is just 2x plus 3. Well, now I just found my x was 7. So that's 2 times 7 plus 3, and 14 plus 3 is 17. So KL must be equal to 17. If you plug in your x to this expression for LM, you would find that that is also 17. 4 times 7 would be 28. 
28 minus 11 makes 17 as well. Here's a try now for you to try on your own using the angle bisector theorem and the converse of the angle bisector theorem. If you'd like to try this problem completely on your own, please pause the video now. Otherwise, if you keep the video playing, I'm gonna go over the solution. All right, so for try now two part A, we're given that HI is seven and IJ is also seven. And the measure of angle HGI is 25 degrees. Well, we wanna know what's the measure of angle IGJ. First off, notice that we have this point I and see how that point is equidistant from the two sides of the angle? They're both seven from the side of the angle. The distance to the side is just that perpendicular segment that connects the point to the side of the angle. So HI and IJ both being seven mean that it's equidistant. So now by the angle or by the converse of the angle bisector theorem, we know that Ray GI here bisects angle H G J by that converse of the angle bisector theorem. Since I is equidistant from the sides of the angle, Ray GI must bisect the angle. So now that can help me find my missing piece. If this is an angle bisector, I know that both halves of the angle have to be the same so that the measure of that angle I, G, J must also be 25 degrees. Now let's look at this one here. Okay, so if measure of angle H, G, J is 57 degrees, measure of angle I, G, J is 28.5 degrees, and H, I is 12.2, what is the value of I, J? First, I'm just going to redraw my diagram. So I'm told that angle HGJ is 57 degrees. That's my outer angle. And IGJ is 28 and a half degrees. So IGJ is right here. That's 28.5. Notice, though, that if we take 57 and we divide that by 2, that is 28 and a half. So both halves of my angle are 28.5. Half of 57, they also again add back to 57. 28 and a half and 28 and a half makes 57. So that means that GI here, by definition, is an angle bisector. Because it's taking that angle and it's dividing it into two equal parts. And now I'm told that HI is 12.2. Notice that I is along that angle bisector. And by the angle bisector theorem, if I is along that angle bisector, the distance from I to H must be equal to the distance from I to J. So IJ must also be equal to 12.2. And once again, that's by the angle bisector theorem. This concludes lesson 5.1 on bisectors and triangles. Thanks for watching and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.